Hey everyone, it's Mr. Zorlicious here and welcome to another quick stream tip video. Now in today's video I'm not going to give you just one tip, in fact I'm going to give you five tips for common things that you might run into when using OBS Studio. Now as always, if you like these kind of videos, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get a notification anytime a new video is put up on the channel. Now like I said earlier, I'm going to give you five tips of things that you might run into when using OBS Studio. Some of these might be more common problems, others might be more specific, but I'm hoping that all of them are going to be useful for you when you're going live on Twitch or your favorite streaming platform. Now let's roll the intro and let's jump right into the first tip. Now this first tip is going to be all about the OBS transition matrix. Now you've probably seen streamers using a transition when switching between different scenes, a just chatting screen to a gaming screen and going back again. Now you can set up one transition within OBS Studio, however if you want to use a little bit more freedom when picking what scenes get which transition, you can go and use a plugin called the OBS transition matrix, I will link it down here below as well in the description. And with this plugin you get the freedom to set up the transition that is being used between every single scene that you have. So if you want to use a transition from one scene to the other but you wanted to use a different transition between two other scenes this is totally possible within the transition matrix i'm going to show you how to do it right now okay so this first tip actually uses a plugin for obs that is called the obs transition matrix so in order to use it we're first going to have to download and install that plugin so go to your browser and type into google obs transition matrix and then you can click the first hit that you're going to get which leads you to the OBS forums. From this side, you can download the OBS Transition Matrix plugin. So go ahead, download the plugin, install it with the provided instructions, and then I will see you in OBS so I can show you how to set it up. Okay, so we are here back into OBS. We've installed the plugin and now it's time to actually set it up. And as you can see, I got multiple scenes set up over here. And between some scenes, I want to show my actual transition. And between other scenes, I just want to have a simple cut or a fade transition. Now, normally by default in OBS, you can't set the transition between scenes. However, with this plugin, it's very easy and very simple to set the transition that you want to have happening between each individual scene. Now, if you've installed it, you can find it over here in Tools and then go down here to transition matrix. So within this screen, you can set every individual transition. Now, of course, if you have a lot of scenes, it might look a little bit daunting, but in reality, it's quite easy. So on this side, you have your starting scenes. And then on this side, you have your go to scenes. So basically what you need to think of is you want to think of between what scenes do I have what transitions happening? So for instance, if I am in my just talking scene, which is my full screen webcam, and I go to my main game, I want to have a simple fade instead of my actual stinger. However, if I'm in my BRB screen, and I'm going back to my main game, I actually want to show my stinger a transition and not just a fade. So for you, you need to find out what seeds you want to have, what transitions happening between. And if you know that, all that you have to do is right click on any of these slots and select from these transition options. So you got your cut, your fade and your swipe. These are default within OBS. And then you got your stinger as well, which is also something you need to set up within OBS itself. And that's going to be a simple movie transition that you made for your scenes. So the only thing that you have to do is basically change the scenes that you want to have a different transition happening from your default one within this plugin menu. And that's it. That's all there is to do. Now the second tip is all for you audio enthusiasts out there. You've probably had it when you're watching some streamers, they get excited or they get a little bit louder and you just want to throw off your headphones or turn off your speakers because they get too loud, the audio distorts and it doesn't sound good. Now this is called peaking or clipping and there's a few simple ways that you can prevent this from happening on your stream. I'm going to show you two easy things that you can do within OBS to make sure that your audio doesn't clip. So let's get back into it and I'm going to show you how. So for this next tip, we're going to be working with audio. Like you can see down here, whenever I'm talking to my microphone, you can actually see this bar representing that with a colored scale. So you can see we've got the green, yellow and red over here. What I use as a little rule of thumb, I always try to stay within the yellow of my bar over here. That way I know that I'm not talking too loud and I'm not clipping my audio. It might go a little bit in the red, but make sure it doesn't go over. Now there's two things that you can try to do if your audio is usually clipping. Now the first thing you want to do is click on the cock wheel next to your microphone settings and go to advanced audio properties. Here you will also see your microphone settings. Now look at your volume and see if maybe it is set a little bit too high. I got mine set to plus three decibels because I've noticed that that is a nice sweet spot for my microphone. But sometimes you can set this way higher and it can even set too high so you are clipping by default. Your microphone is simply set too loud so whatever you do you will always clip on your audio. So if you notice that is the case try to set it at zero, try to set it at three, maybe five. Just lower it and look at your audio and see if you might be clipping when you talk normally in your stream like you would normally 
normally do. Now, of course, what number to set this to is very personal and it all depends on your voice and the hardware that you're using. So try and play around with this a little bit, lower it a little bit and look at your audio output and see if you are clipping when you are talking into a microphone, just as you would do like you are on stream. Now, of course, that is a way to do this if you are always clipping by default when you're talking into a microphone. And sometimes while you're streaming, it might happen that you are in a moment that makes you excited. You just get a little bit louder or angry and you yell into your microphone. So what we're going to do then is we're going to set a audio filter to make sure that even if you get a little bit louder, you won't clip on your stream. Now to do this, again, we go to the cogwheel and we click filters. Now, as you can see, I already have several filters set up. These are VST filters. We won't go into them today. That's going to be something for another video. But what you want to do is you want to go down here, click on the plus sign and select the compressor. Just give it a name and then you get all the settings here. Now, again, this is also a little bit personal, so you might want to play around with these values a little bit. But I'm going to tell you shortly what each specific value is going to do. So first off, we have the ratio. Now, the ratio means with how much it's going to compress your audio. Usually, I set it to 2 to 1 meaning that the volume of your audio is going to be cut in half when you go over a specific threshold. Now, like I said, you might want to play around with this a little bit. Maybe for your voice, it might not be enough. It might be too much. So play around with this. Maybe set this to three, maybe to four. Just look at what works for your specific situation. Now, the threshold, that's the amount of audio that the compressor is going to kick in. So when you go over that threshold, your compressor is going to kick in and it's going to lower the volume of your audio. Again, this is very specific for your voice. So try and play around with this. By default, set to 18. You might want to lower it a little bit, maybe to 30, 25. But again, look at what works for you. Talk into your microphone and look at your output and see if you are clipping when you are talking a little bit louder or very enthusiastically on your stream. Next up is the attack. That is after how many seconds of loud audio your compressor is going to kick in. You can set this to one or two milliseconds because usually you want to have it kick in as soon as you get louder than the threshold is. And then we have the release, which is after how many milliseconds your compressor turns itself off again and puts your microphone back into its normal volume. I got this set to 60 milliseconds, which is usually okay, but again, play around with it a little bit and maybe lower or raise that number a little bit. And then we have the output gain. You can leave that to zero decibels because we don't want to increase the volume of our compressor. And that's it. When you set that up correctly, you will notice that you probably won't clip anymore, even in those moments where in the heat of the moment you get louder and more enthusiastic on your streams. Now, trust me, your viewers will probably thank you for it. Next up is an issue that you might not have encountered yet, but it can happen when you are playing certain games. And that is, you get a black screen when using the game capture within OBS. Now, certain games prevent OBS from using the game capture feature to show off the gameplay in your stream. Now, there's a very simple way that you can circumvent this within OBS by using a different capture source. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, if you notice that you get a black screen while trying to stream a certain game, most likely it is because this game is not supporting game capture. If you notice a game that doesn't support game capture, so what you can do is you can set up a window capture or a display capture source. So in order to do that, just click on the plus sign select display capture, give it a name, and there you can basically set a display. So I have got two displays, as you can see right here. So I can set it to display one or display two. What this is gonna do, it's literally gonna capture everything that happens on that display. And usually that's the solution if you wanna capture certain games. For instance, Destiny 2 doesn't support game capture. You can just use window capture or display capture to capture that game and still stream it on Twitch. Now, if you want to use window capture, it's basically the same idea. However, you're not going to capture the entire display. You're only going to capture a specific window. It kind of works similar to the game capture. However, there's a few differences behind the scenes. So if you want to use window capture instead of display capture, just add that to your scene, right click on it, select properties. And then here in this drop down, you can select the game that you want to stream. Now, this tip is especially for those of you who have a lot of sources within their scenes and you don't always want to show all of them when transitioning to a certain scene. Now, of course, when you transition to a certain scene, you can always quickly uncheck all the sources that you don't want to show. However, there's an easier way to do this so that people don't see anything they're not supposed to see. And I'm going to show you how to do it with the studio mode in OBS. Now, sometimes you have multiple sources within a scene that you don't always want to use, but you don't want to turn them off when you're already transitioned to the scene because then people are going to see it anyway. In that situation, the studio mode is going to be very handy and it's going to be your best friend. So click on this studio mode button over here and you will see these two scenes next to each other. So the left one is the preview. That's only what you're going to see. And then the right one is what your audience is going to see. So in this mode, you can basically select any scene that you want and nobody is gonna see that you've actually transitioned to those scenes. And within this, you can make changes. You can turn off, for instance, certain sources that you don't wanna show, and then you can click the transition button and then your audience is gonna see it. Or you can use this slider to have a little bit of a fade transition over 
into your program. And that way you can make some changes behind the scenes before your viewers are actually going to see your new scene. But there's one thing that I do want to note. I'm not sure if it's my PC setup or if there's a bug within OBS, but I've noticed that sometimes when going to certain scenes, you won't get to see everything that you've got set up or not all your sources are going to be visible in the preview window. Now this isn't necessarily an issue. If you know what sources you want to turn off, just click on them and then transition into it. And then your audience is going to see everything. But that's a little something that I've noticed when using OBS. I'm not sure if it's a bug, but I just wanted to point it out. So did you know that if you see the same thing, no, it's not necessarily on your side. And you can still use the studio mode because your audience is always going to see the correct thing. And lastly, this tip is for those of you who use a green screen behind their webcam. I'm going to show you exactly how you can remove that green screen so you get a nice, clean, transparent background. Now this tip is for those of you who use a green screen behind their webcam. If you want to remove that, it's very simple. I don't have a green screen myself, as you can see, but the method of doing this is exactly the same with images as it is with webcams or other sources. So in this case, I'm going to be using an image with a green background, but if you're going to be using a webcam, just add that as a video capture device as you normally would do, and then all the other steps are going to be the exact same. So as you can see, I want to remove the green background from my image here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the source and select filters. Now the filter that I want to add is a chroma key filter. So I'm going to add that. And you can see already by default, it will basically do a good job of removing the green screen. As you can see, the key color type is green. It also has presets for blue, magenta and custom. But if you have a green screen, you can just leave it to green. And then these settings you need to play around with a little bit because it's all depending on your lighting situation and the exact color of your green screen. So as you can see, for me, these default settings work. But sometimes you need to play around a little bit with the similarity, with the smoothness and with the key color spill reduction. Most of the times these lower settings are fine, you can leave them as is, but if you notice that some of the colors are a little bit off, play with them around a little bit as well. And that's it, when you're done, you can close out and you can see that the green background is completely removed and you now have a nice, clean, transparent background on your stream. And that's it, those were my five tips for common problems that you might encounter within OBS Studio. Now as always, if you have any questions about these tips or any of the other tips that I've already put out, you can always find me on Twitch, I stream every Monday, Tuesday and Friday, or you can send me a message on Twitter or jump into my Discord channel and ask me any questions that you may have over there. And of course, if you have any things that you want to know yourself about streaming, let me know and I will see if I can make a video about that specific topic. Now again, if these kind of videos are helpful for you and you want to support the channel, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get a notification anytime a new video is put up. And with that, all that is left for me to say is my name is Mr. Delicious. You guys are all very delicious as well. Happy streaming, good luck, and I will see you again in the next video. I can't deal. Also, it's my tongue is still burning. I don't know if this was like the hottest flavor, you know, outside of the actual hottest, but... Ah. Oh, it helps. This surprisingly helps. Okay, I, I'm thinking that's something I'm gonna have to do the entire stream now.